Materials and methods, we use radial limbal segments uh, containing Schlem's canal. Place the limbal segments face up so that the trabecular meshwork is facing the OCT beam. And then we place a cannula within Schlem's canal, which leads to reservoirs where we can control pressure. Uh, the OCT scans through radial limbal segments. The reservoirs attached to the perfusion cannula permit controlling uh, pressure within Schlem's canal. And also, by changing reservoirs, we can rapidly change pressure gradients and watch trabecular meshwork motion. A radial OCT limbal segment showing a uh, cannula within Schlem's canal. Uh, a meridional section of the same uh, segment showing the cannula and its distal end. And the entire length of Schlem's canal is visible uh, at a 10 millimeter um, pressure gradient induced into Schlem's canal. Note the entire length of the canal is uh, dilated. We see collector channel entrances, uh, multiple ones which are easily visible with the 3D technique. A Myra three-dimensional software permits looking at the X, Y, and Z axis. And we can rotate this axis in any plane so we can go through the uh, planes in any dimension. By taking advantage of this tilt and turn, we can optimize the image so that we see the trabecular meshwork, Schlem's canal, collector channel entrances, and hinge scleral flaps at the collector channel entrances. Each of these images has been optimized to see these hinged flaps, which are, seem to be present at every collector channel entrance. Of even more interest, though, is the presence of cylindrical attachment structures which connect the trabecular meshwork with the hinged scleral flaps. We see multiple such structures here, and because the structures are hinged together and connected together, any movement of the trabecular meshwork will induce movement of the flaps. 50 millimeters of mercury with a uh, cannula and Schlem's canal with a trabecular meshwork, Schlem's canal, collector channel entrance and intrascleral collector channel, as well as a, a deep intrascleral plexus uh, channel. At zero intraocular pressure, Schlem's canal is just a potential space, as is the collector channel entrance and the intrascleral collector channel. As pressure gradients increase uh, progressively, there's a progressive increase in the dimensions of each of the structures, including Schlem's canal, uh, collector channel entrances, and the intrascleral channels. A OCT image in a radial uh, meridional section with the trabecular meshwork visible, and a scanning electron microscopy showing a similar image, uh, Schlem's canal. Schlem's canal, collector channel uh, intrasclerally, uh, visible by both OCT and scanning electron microscopy, hinged scleral flaps uh, at collector channel entrances, uh, visible by both OCT and SEM, and multiple uh, cylindrical attachment structures between the trabecular meshwork and these collector channel entrances as seen in these multiple images. Scanning electron microscopy with the trabecular meshwork, collector channel entrance, hinged scleral flaps, and the deep intrascleral plexus, which is visible on OCT as well. In more detail, trabecular meshwork, Schlem's canal, collector channel entrance, hinged intrascleral uh, flaps, uh, which are capable of motion because they're hinged at only one end, and the convoluted pathway of aqueous uh, passage between these hinged scleral flaps, and cylindrical attachment structures between the trabecular meshwork and the uh, hinged flaps. Comparison of scanning electron microscopy with OCT indicates that the OCT images in our system are capable of a high resolution, almost comparable to scanning electron microscopy. We can compare the images with ciliary muscle in both the trabecular meshwork, Schlem's canal, collector channels, 
septa uh, separating Schlem's canal from these intrascleral collector channels. And the cylindrical attachment structures spanning between the trabecular meshwork and Schlem's canal. By inducing uh, pressure gradients within the canal of Schlem, we can watch the trabecular meshwork undergo motion as well as the collector channel entrances. The Schlem's canal itself changes shape as does the collector channel, the interscleral channels, and also the cylindrical structures spanning across Schlem's canal. Quantitation of the same information with time on the x-axis and height in the y-axis. We see Schlem's canal, the uh, cylindrical attachment structure spanning across the canal, changing dimensions, and the uh, collector channels themselves changing dimensions. Again, uh, time in milliseconds on the x-axis, area on the y-axis showing Schlem's canal height change and collector channel height change. 100 milliseconds uh, is time to plateau in the Slim's Canal area and about 300 milliseconds in the collector channel area showing the um, rapid motion and also the images show the marked synchrony of motion of these uh, structures. In summary, we have collector channels which open and close which may act as resistance sites and normals, sites of abnormal resistance and glaucoma and perhaps be an explanation for some of the MIGs distal resistance. I'd like to thank my associates, uh, particularly uh, Ricky Wangs and his uh, laboratory group doing the OCT, and also the other departments at the University of Washington who contributed to this effort. Thank you.